well it's New Year's Day and what to do for the start of the year. Uh, I thought I'd have a go at a semi-abstract again. So I've got a nice big 14s canvas and I'm going to digitise these uh, snow scenes that a friend of mine very kindly sent on from Scotland. He's coming to visit me, or they are. She and her fiancé are going to come over to for France and stay with me for a week or so while they house hunt over there this next summer. So I look forward to seeing them and thank them very much for sending these photographs on from the recent snow up there in Scotland. The view of Ben Lomond, Ben Lomond I know quite well from the past because I painted down below it uh, in a little research lock uh, above Loch Lomond. Beautiful, beautiful spot. As I've been unable to get photographs myself this year of snow, this could be rather fun. I want to use the knives and different textures and just play around with paint again. I haven't done a, a, a loose painting like this, I haven't done an abstract like this for a while now. You know, I've been working on the street scenes and so on, so something a bit different to do. Running out of ideas at the moment, just keep myself occupied. So we have a lovely big canvas to work on this morning. Let's look at the tools we're going to use and the materials. I've got my homemade stay wet palette here. Nice big tray to mix in. Plastering trowel and a cake trowel here. A little one for lifting cake slices or icing. Quite a nice uh, tool for a large uh, palette, for a large painting knife, isn't it? And of course, I've got my usual painting knife as well, this shape that I like so much, right handed one. Then I've got other tools here if I need them, like forks or spoons, brushes, my filberts and flats. And of course, my sponge roller, which I'm almost certainly going to need for this particular job. So, Let's have some great fun with this and slap some paint on and really enjoy. Now the point of this picture is that I've done a whole series of enhanced photographs about this landscape on the computer. And uh, it's, I want to use parts of all of these. There's no one piece that I just say, well that's it. Um, one of these is just the one I want to do. And I'm going to play around on this canvas with these until I get what I want. Um, but the first point is just where to start with it. And I think... Obviously I'm going to start with the, I think I'll start with the sky and work my way down. Um, and I don't want to start with uh, sponge rollers. I want to have nice big slabs of paint going on to here. So I'm going to just use my smaller knife just to start mixing. And just see sort of the colours I'm going to get. Um, rather than ladle those onto uh, the, pal the palette itself, I'm going to bring these colours onto the edge of this cake knife first of all and just see how they go on. I think I'm going to need a very big one yet. Just intuitively feel my way into this first of all. And let the colours just blend and keep them nice and fresh. Get effects that we can't get with the brushes. too much paint out at a time, I can do it this way and just control the amount that's going to go onto my knife first of all. One colour over another as they dry as well. Really play around so I don't I don't want to know my directions too much with this painting. I don't want just to be too preconceived and just a landscape again. I'm going to use what we have here and find what I want. As I say, take the best of all of these, these worlds into this. Have to get rid of this white canvas first of all. And uh, just see wood for trees as usual with, a, with any figurative painting the same. Never mind, mind abstract. This is sort of a crossover between the two of you using the, the figurative images with the abstract side of it. These wonderful effects slabs of paint across here and I can roll them as well and blend as I go along if I wish. of my fingers after all. So I'm quite nicely get my hands into this. 
mixing colours actually into the knife as I go along. So this yellow for instance I just put into there deliberately to mix into this colour as I, as I place it on. They come up through here. Get colour on here and I can really work over it. I really want to get some paint going, why don't I just lather it on straight from the tube. If I make a mess, I make a mess. It's a piece of canvas and some paint. Yeah, okay, I've lost a few bobs, but what the hell? I'm not going to move forward unless I experiment and explore as well, that's for sure. Bring some more blues over this. Well, it dries off a bit, I reckon. Well, you can just use the sponge into it for a minute just to see what happens. The roller. I could even use the big old knife on that. I did too, actually. Let's take this one and really just experiment and see what happens, shall we? We drag out these effects one across another. Because we can really get these effects by experimenting and by exploring this, I'm going to be doing a demo for uh, our society, Grimsby, in a month or so. I'm going to be using not just a big canvas as this, but I'm going to be doing in my woodland, a landscape, a river scene of the, the cruise. And I want to show them how we can use rollers and knives to prepare the preliminary painting like this. We use nothing to it. And I hope they're going to be quite amused by the fact that I can use builders' tools like this to start off with more texture across here but we'll see that roller across there just to lift that paint a bit and get a bit more texture going on. As I can do even with the with the knife because there's nothing to stop me from coming back and dabbling with the knife to get texture. I want to do more turquoise over there and get my far. <coughs> So we're near completed there yet. Let's decide how many of these marks I want to leave or how many I want to link in with the uh, sponge roller. And we can start to draw, we draw in some larger shapes. It's showing through all of the other colours, so I can go to a small knife that kind of comes all the way along here. Put that ground here. Let's run the roller and just look at the textures. Some of this where it's maybe a little bit too obvious, and we'll just do a little bit of blending here and there. Mind these aggressive strokes, but I don't want to make too much of them. Let's uh, put this lovely dark line of colour behind here. We've got a really nice deep blue going on. I'm going to take some Prussian blue and that along my trowel. Lighter blue coming into it. Almost down into a purple in places. Let's really, really go for these colours. Mix them up on my, my blade as I go along. Take the way down into here. I'll swap some paint around on the plant now. Love it. Look for these colours in a minute. I'm going to put a lot more colour into this. I'll use my sponge roller, I think, in a minute, just to read this in. Plaster on this colour down here. Trees here. 
Well, they are. They've got lots of different than that. Nose. 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 I said I was going to do, we'll link in these colours here. Use the sponge just to do a bit of white for a minute. And put those back in afterwards. Lose this white. And that's it, like bring these mountains across that later. Let it snow. So close up to the big paintings, I can't really see. I'm doing it this I know it just feels intuitively right. If it feels right, well, we'll do it. Hopefully, it'll look nice as well. Yeah. Yeah, I've got some interesting effects happening. I'm going to let that dry just a little bit now and then come back and we'll start on the turquoises and do it. Right, that's now had time for it to dry off, so we can start to work with colours over the top and then it's real fun. Wow, this is great. Well, I'm going to start working in some um, turquoise now and uh, I've got some lovely deep greens and turquoises here. So I'll start with a lovely bit of green just across the top here. That's a strange colour to do, but Sorry. for those of you that just like to do photorealism, I'm probably having kittens by now. <laughs> look at how many colours we can get. Let that glow through these turquoises coming down here. picture with a lot of purple in the background and another with the blue just coming over it so let's just see what happens. shapes together and what sort of effects we actually start to get here now. Well, I want to link these a bit more, not looking quite so crude. And with these mountains, I think we can just start to leave the mountains just a little Use that for palette knife on these, I think, we can, and slap some of these colours on in a minute. Just want to find some of the lights and darks here. I want to get some of the feeling of these lights in now. Just to Feel the, sort of the balance between the abstract and the physical uh, figurative qualities of this. As I said to you, painting isn't going to be fun. Why are we doing it? Let's bring that out there a bit so I can just get these bits of light into here. Paint up these little bits of canvas that are still showing what it like. These lovely colours going on all over here. And uh, oh yes, it's just lovely to play around with these colours and, and use this abstractly, very abstractly, and use the picture as a basis for a painting, not to be copied. I don't want to make two obvious marks here and there. Glazing it over the top of these textures to 
try and pull it together a bit more. Look at the, um, the blues high up here. I'm not. Uh, I've been certainly taking over a bit. It would do, wouldn't it? Um, it's very powerful. I need some green and warmer colours on the bottom soon. Take back this green a bit with this purple magenta colour. Don't want to become too itsy bitsy impressionist, but equally I don't want the green just taking over there. Let's see what's a bit more uh, cobalt blue does up here. It's much warmer blue, and it'll just suddenly make this much pinker by adding this blue across it. Bringing in a whole new ball game of warmer blues against these cobalt blue. Then I'm going to take a bit of ultramarine and add that into it. And just see what we get as we start to get some much richer, deeper blues to start to place down here amongst the, the mountains more. That there comes down through here and then there's a beautiful piece of mountain there coming down around and down into here. We've got these greys going a bit more in a minute. These pinker. And then these beautiful blues that actually do start to come in much more strongly. I'm going to take a bit more touch marine into that and roll it out and see if we can get a bit more of this ultramarine happening down here. Areas here that I'm going to just use the sponge sideways on as I just start to try and find these lovely branches that are coming out through here, through these trees. Well, I'm almost at the stage of working with a brush, but I still want to uh, use the sponge rollers a little more yet. Let's start on some of the slightly warmer colours. Take a little bit of Prussian blue and a, a wee touch of burnt sienna into that, and maybe a wee touch of yellow ochre. So I'm getting more specific in my in my colours now. I'm just taking a few uh, branches through these later. At the moment, I just want to get the feeling of these twigs form. A little bit warmer in the background, so they should just come forward. Here it's raining outside, so not really a bright snowy day like they've got here. If it was, I'd probably be out there trying to paint that because I need to be fancy doing some snow paintings again, but in reality, not just here, into here. It's a slightly green tint. I'm adding the yellow ochre to the brown and to the, the uh, Prussian blue, I'm able to give a slight green tint to it. But not the same. Warm green, I'm going to bring onto, onto the foreground as well as I start to bring these some beautiful warms here that I want to play with the brush and the, uh, and the knife. Let's just start off with a slight green tint to them. Okay, now I'm going to deliberately add some yellow ochre and green to that mix. In fact, I'll take a bit of Green as well, and add that to make it a much, much warmer golden green that's coming up there. I start to get a feeling of these richer but still fairly dull colours to make the light of the snow still stand out. I quite like that, that, that sort of grey. I'm going to take some magenta and put that with that. See if we can just bring out the purple grey of that. Quite subtle colours these, and even though we're using quite crude or seemingly crude tools, it's surprising what we can bring out. Chrome yellow into it, that's what that does. Keep expanding these colours. Yes, that little 
bit of yellow in there's going to help, I think. Oh, that's working in the background there as well. Got a bit more light center in that. That does. You can just bring out these bits of sunlight behind here a little more across this landscape. As I say, we're going to play warm against cool, light against dark, rough against smooth as I gently bring these colours through. I said I don't know what direction this thing is going to go in. Any minute it could just change, get worse, get better. All I can do is just play with these colours. Use a little bit of black into it and a wee touch more brown just to put some warmth. Let's see what we get with that. That should give us a lovely deep colour down here. So let's start to make some real warms around here. I'll take some uh, burnt sienna, put a bit more burnt sienna out soon. I think I'm, I'm ready to start doing a little bit of work with um, a brush now. We just go back on my lights a little in the mountains and foreground and then I'm going to go across to my brush. I'm so careful now because I could overdo these lights and I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to look at those lights behind and don't want to make them too, too brighter. Um, the light at the moment, and then we'll add a little bit of uh, yellow ochre to the light, just a little bit, before I try working with um, lemon yellow and white to really get some of these very cool yellows. Let's work at this very light, very light pinks almost going on behind here. I was talking about lemon yellow and white just a moment ago, just to see how cool we need it to go. And I'll just play a little bit of that. Let's see if there's any highlights anywhere that we just bring out a little. Won't be much, but it might just be the odd bit of light here. And right, there. let's uh, start with the half inch velvet. Nice new one in this case. <laughs> So I want to make a bit more of these warmths first. I'm going to take a bit of um, cadmium orange here and really start to hit a bit more of these warms. I took it down just a fraction with a little bit of a little bit of blue, just a fraction down. And I just want to catch the sunlight coming across these before I start putting in some greens against it because the greens will really, if I put greens into this as well, they're going to really shine out, aren't they? This is where I want to come in with these greens which are going to play against this and that's what's missing at the minute are these greens. I'm going to do a sap green. Leave the eye in and we'll also make it happen because it's here now we need to make it balance out back into here a bit. Back into these uh, little distant pieces here. We can start to find, perhaps find, some of these greens even going on to these trees here. I don't want to pull it back from being abstract to being too figurative, but equally, let's make the most of the beautiful things that are in it. And if these little lines and branches are absolutely beautiful, I'll try and use them. And uh, once we've got these dark sorted out, we'll come back just a few of the reflections on the trees themselves of the sunlight, just to make those stand out at the bases a bit more. Right, let's go back onto here, because Suddenly, I think we're almost there, actually. Let's look at these little bits of light that are coming down the side of those. I'm going to take some light magenta again. Add it into that orange from earlier. And just see if a little bit of light down the side of these trees will just bring them out that fraction. Don't go over do these. He's warm suddenly now. In fact, if anything, I need to go back to some of the cools. I'm going to do it. Just kind of now make some very, very light blue again. Just come back to my very light, light blues. 
should just pick up on a few of these little bits on the edges of the trees and things. And I think, as I'm feeling at the moment, that this painting is about done. I don't think I want to do too much more to it. I may change my mind tomorrow a little bit. We'll see. But at the moment, I certainly don't think it's, it's necessary. And we played, as I was trying to do, between the abstract and the figurative with this. Let's see what a signature looks like on it. There we are, that's been fun today. Maybe tomorrow I want to work a little bit more, but at the moment I'm happy enough with this. Just, you just need to stand back and look at odd little pieces that get a little bit of colour here and there. Little bits of colour just here and there, just to bring out warms or cools. It's getting dark outside, so it's getting hard to really see my colours on here. I better finish soon. There we go then. We'll photograph that. Take a closer look. Let's zoom in and take a look at the mountain, shall we? trees the way they work down into the background there and down to these foreground grasses that are a little bit brown on the film here because the light is so dull. Well there we are then, another one done, large um, Scottish landscape in a semi-abstract fashion and brought back into uh, towards figurative work. Very enjoyable, not sure what I'm doing next, but uh, nice to do another large one like this. Some material I can find, I guess. <laughs>